Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how you can get the most important person you need to talk to to say yes to the things you're saying, and that person is yourself? That's what we'll talk about today. Say yes, and you'll figure it out afterwards. Tina Fey. Today, we're going to talk about the book by William Urey, Getting to Yes with Yourself and Other Worthy Opponents. I mentioned in a previous podcast that you have to realize that when you see people out there who are entrepreneurs, maybe the Mark Zuckerbergs and the Steve Jobs and all the people who are pioneers in our world, the very first person they had to convince was themselves. (laughs) You think about them going and talking to investors and talking to landowners and talking to people who can help them get their business going, that came well after they convinced themselves this could happen. And so that's what this book is really about. How can we convince ourselves to do something, turn ourselves into our friend instead of our opponent? And I like that attitude about it. So he said in general, when people ask him as a negotiator, What's the most important skill you need when it comes to negotiating with other people? He said, it's putting yourselves in the shoes of the other person, right? So if you're trying to negotiate with your boss over a promotion or a different position, you have to keep in mind what they need as well. They're not sitting around, as I mentioned in the negotiation podcast, thinking, hmm, how can I make Jill's life better? They're thinking about how they can make the company better, the team better. And so if you have that ability to put yourself in other people's shoes, it will help you with the negotiation with other people, but it will also help you put the negotiation with yourself because we're trying to make sure that we understand what we're saying to ourselves. If we're saying, I want to go on an expensive vacation, is that what your brain is really telling you? Or is your brain just telling you, I just need to get away. I am stressed out. I need a vacation. I need to get out of here. That's a whole different thing than having a very expensive vacation. It is possible that you can have a low-cost vacation and accomplish the same thing. So by listening to yourself, you will be able to tease out all those different factors and actually solve the problem. Same thing if you're trying to negotiate with your boss. It does sound weird to say that you're going to put yourself in your own shoes because we're always in our own shoes. But sometimes we're actually not listening to what we need or what we want to actually do. In a previous podcast, I mentioned that pretend that you're talking to yourself, but it's your best friend saying these words. Probably even give yourself better advice or a better analysis of it if you weren't thinking that you were talking to yourself. It's unfortunate about how we talk to ourselves that we really need to use our negotiation skills and our listening skills with ourselves. And he said that we should get into our inner BATNA. And if you don't remember, we talked about BATNA before in the negotiation podcast that we have to have the best alternative to a negotiated agreement, meaning that if we can't get what we want, what would be the next thing that we could do or get that would be acceptable? And so maybe we're trying to talk ourselves into buying tickets to go on a worldwide trip. We've always wanted to see all these places in the world. Our inner brain is like, well, you don't have the money, the time off. You don't have what we need in order to take a worldwide trip. What is our best alternative to a negotiated agreement? What's the thing that we could actually get that would be successful in our brains? So try to talk to ourselves, not only with some compassion, and some listening, but also keeping in mind what it is that we're willing to do and willing to give to ourselves in order to make that happen. And then make sure that you make commitments to yourself once you've come up to an agreement with yourself about what it is you need to do or not do or whatever the agreement is. And the problem is, is that oftentimes we see scarcity in our own lives and we see that maybe there's not enough time, like I said, not enough money. And so we're very quick to shut things down. So how can we actually get past some of the anxieties that we have? And not in an irresponsible way. If we don't have money to go on a worldwide vacation, don't go on a worldwide vacation. But what can we do that would be acceptable to us instead 
and then not drowning ourselves in further anxiety? How can we get to that without making it awful? And primarily why we want to get to yes with ourselves is that we're trying to also address our needs. If we need a vacation, if we need to get away, what can we do in negotiations that are better than what we're doing? How can we get to an acceptable place? So for example, I want to travel more, but I also want to save more money. So I found solutions that would help me to do both. And namely, that means camping more. Camping tends to be low cost. You meet a lot of people that way. And I really started upping my camping game with better gear, a better tent that goes on top of my car so that I can actually enjoy camping more but not spend as much money on trips that I would love to take around the world. It was a compromise. It was my BATNA. And so as we get better to getting to yes to ourselves, it will help us do it on a daily basis. We'll become better with negotiating with ourselves about how we can meet our needs while at the same time not blowing our budgets out, not blowing our time out, and actually have a win-win situation. And so when we do that, We want to make sure that we're not just negotiating with ourselves on special situations. We're trying to negotiate with ourselves, listen to ourselves, and come up with a good solution all the time. And the better that we get better at it with ourselves, just like if we were negotiating with our boss or someone else, we'll get better with it all the time. Have we really dug down deep, like I said, on that vacation issue, found the real issue, found the critical point, found out what we really need? And sort of looked at it from a higher level instead of just either outright going, I want a vacation. No, we can't have the money. We don't have the time for a vacation. Can we, again, look at that bigger picture, listen carefully, look for those underlying feelings and emotions that are there and come up with a real solution? He says it's called seeing yourself from the balcony, that you're looking at things with a big, large view. That you're not just narrowly listening to like, oh, I just need a vacation. I want to go on a trip on a world. You're actually now taking a harder look at it, going higher up and observing exactly what the problem is. Again, because is it that you need to go around the world? Is it that you just need to get away? Or if you're trying to get a point where you're trying to buy a new car and your brain says, we want to buy an expensive new racing car. But what you really need is a car that's more reliable because the thing that's really getting you down is the fact that your car doesn't start half the time you try it. So while an expensive car would be lovely, it's not actually the thing that you're really worried about on a day-to-day basis. You're worried about not being able to do the things you need to do because your car is unreliable. So if you actually look at it from the balcony with a bigger view, you might actually come into what the real problem is And you'll be able to see the bigger issues that are there. And sometimes, too, we can even see that there are trigger points for ourselves, places that we're emotional about maybe a little bit too much. I had a thing when I was a kid where I really wanted to get a car because I wanted the ability to get away, basically, from scary situations that maybe would happen in my house. So having a car was very, very important to me. And when I have a car that's unreliable, I get really nervous. But I live on my own now. The reasons that I was nervous when I was a kid no longer exist. And there's Uber and Lyft and all these other ride sharing services around that exist now that didn't exist then. So even though I may panic about something, my car not being reliable, I live in a different time. And maybe I don't need to spend money on that reliability as much as I needed to back when I was younger and a little bit more nervous about things. So it's possible, too, that when we're trying to convince ourselves of something, it may be because of old data, old emotions that are just no longer true. And when you're looking for that reasonable example, it may help you when looking from the balcony to see what the real issues are, to see what no longer exists as a real issue and a place where we're just feeling trapped or struggling from a past emotion. And so he says that whenever we feel like we're being triggered by a past thought or an emotion or a fear or something that was getting to us, we need to observe it. We need to acknowledge it. Because part of the problem is, is if you were just to say, well, (laughs) Jill, that doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to worry about that. It might 
stop the situation from happening then, but it really doesn't address the problem that I was trying to solve in the fact that I got nervous because I don't have a reliable car. So what you have to do is really acknowledge fear and look at it better. So if we take that opportunity to really look at ourselves, do a deep dive and observe what we're feeling, we can either convince ourselves again, maybe in my situation, that situation no longer exists. But I do need a car because I do have to go to work. I do have to have a reliable piece of transportation. But maybe the situation isn't as urgent. Maybe the type of car I need to get isn't the same kind of car that I would have bought back in the day. And some other solution might even be better. Maybe I can get an account with one of these ride sharing services so I can get a discount when I need to use it. Or I can buy a car that is more reliable, but isn't exactly the type of car I was imagining I need in order to keep myself safe. Situation has changed, but if we listen to ourselves, we listen to the issues that are there and acknowledge the fear or emotion that was going on, we'll be able to get over it and look for a deeper meaning. And he said that when we pour water from a faucet, it ends up being bubbly when we first get it out of the faucet and it's hard to look through. And sometimes if you just give it a little bit of time and the bubbles settle down, we'll actually be able to see into the glass. And that means if there's an emotional point for us, maybe we went out to start our car, the car wouldn't start. I was really trying to go somewhere I wanted to go and I'm all riled up. If we just gave it a little bit of time so the bubbles fall out of the glass of water, we might have a better point of view in a little bit than we do right at that moment. So giving it that higher perspective, that view from the balcony, but also giving ourselves a little bit of time might help us have cooler heads and a better decision to go forward in the future. And so then you ask those questions. Why do I want this? Why do I want this particular thing? What do I think it'll provide to me? And dig down deep. So by asking those questions and drilling down, maybe the, the Simon Sinek five whys. I need a new car. Why? Because this car is not reliable. Why? Because it has problems that need to be fixed. Why? Well, I never take it into the shop to get them fixed. Why? Well, I never make time to do it. Oh, maybe instead of needing a new car, you need to just get yourself to get, bring the car into the shop and drop a little bit of money to get it fixed for real or get the things fixed that will make the car reliable. So getting to the whys, listening to ourselves, it'll help us understand really what's going on and what we can actually do to solve the problem, the BATNA. What is the best alternative to me actually doing this thing that I could get done? And it may be spending a little bit of money on getting the thing that's broken fixed, or it may be buying a new car, but we don't know that until we dig down deep. And then he says the next step is the WATNA, as compared to the BATNA. And that means my worst alternative to a negotiated agreement. So what's the worst thing that could happen while I'm going through this process that's there. And that may be the thing that you're in the back of your head worried about. If you start digging down deep and thinking about what is the worst alternative, the worst alternative made to my car situation or even my vacation situation is I do nothing. I don't go on a vacation. I remain stressed out. And I feel very dissatisfied with my life because I just can't get out of the rut I'm in. Or maybe with the car is I don't do anything. I don't get it fixed. I don't get a new car. I don't come up with an alternative solution like getting a frequent flyer account to one of these ride sharing programs so that I feel more comfortable. Maybe I do nothing. And that nothing is the thing that you're actually worried about. Because maybe in the past, you did nothing. And that's the thing that you're really worried about is that you're just going to live another decade without that trip, without the new car, or without any other situations that you really need to do to fix it. So when you look at that WAPNA, it may be the thing deep in your soul that you're most worried about. You know, so if you were thinking about getting a new job, well, what's the best thing that could happen? Well, I get a new job that I like, that I think is going to be wonderful for me, that gives me opportunity to grow and become better compensated with more vacation in the company. That's my best dream to come true. Well, what's a good alternative to what your best dream is. Well, maybe I get another job and it leads me with some solid steps so that I can get towards the thing that I'm looking at. Maybe the pay isn't that great, but within two years, 
you get off of a probationary period and you make a lot more money or you have a lot more opportunities. And then what's the worst alternative? Oh, the worst alternative is I don't do anything or I get a worse job that I hate more. And you start talking about what that utter fear is in the back of your head that is really keeping you from doing this or what you think is going to happen. So really by getting to that WATNA, you're really getting to the place that you're the most afraid of. The thing that you're most worried is going to happen if you do the activity you're trying to do. Make sure you understand exactly where that fear is so that you can basically fend against it or come up with a strategy against it. Chances are, if you went out and got a new job and it wasn't your dream job, you didn't even like it that much or you didn't think much of that company, it is still giving you a valuable experience so that you could get the next job after that. You're not stuck with that. You're not stuck there for the rest of your life. Even if you have this horrible fear of what's going to happen, it at least is leading you into a pathway that you can get past. And then you can start addressing those fears because maybe those fears aren't real. Maybe you're worried that you will lose the current job you have if you go accept this new job, which is probably true. Does that mean that if this new job was terrible, you couldn't go back to your old job or couldn't go back to what you were doing in your old job? Try to address those fears because as soon as you do, you'll be on your way to doing something great. So getting to yes with yourself is partially listening to yourself, looking at the big picture, finding out what the acceptable options are, and then addressing what your deep, dark fears, your deep, dark emotions are so that you can address them because those are what's causing the resistance. That's what's causing you to fight these new good ideas for your life because you think, what if it doesn't work out? What if I can't do this? What if I get stuck in a position? And so you have to address those fears, not just bury them. And once you start getting out of the motions, getting out of that resentment or the anxieties from the past, Once you start feeling less angry or antagonistic towards yourself, you're really willing to give and receive with yourself, maybe not getting that perfect thing, but getting something that's really good. That's when you'll start be able to address the obstacles that are standing in your own way from getting to yes with yourself. So my challenge with you is look for one thing you've been saying no to yourself about and see if you can try that exercise with you. See if you can listen to yourself and find out what the deep needs are regarding this particular topic. Try to figure out what an acceptable negotiating point is, even if you can't get what you want. What could you get that would be still acceptable for yourself? Figuring out what your fears and anxieties are and respecting them in yourself, even if that situation no longer exists. How can you get past that? And then also at that same time, looking to see what the worst case scenario is. What is your brain really afraid of? And once you start addressing those things, these steps will make it easier for you to get to yes on that particular item and see if you can negotiate your way with yourself. Because again, that's our very first hurdle. And our fun entertainment advice this week comes from Yes Man with Jim Carrey and the wonderful Terrence Stamp. We're going to make a covenant, Carl. Do you want to make a covenant? Uh, The word is yes, Carl. Yes! 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 Once you leave this building, every time an opportunity presents itself, no matter what it is, you will say yes. What if I say the other word? You'll be making a promise to yourself. And when you break a promise to yourself, things can get a little dicey. What do you say, Carl? Are you ready to make a covenant? Yes. 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 Again. Yes. Yes. Say it again. Yes. Yes. Ah. (laughs) Make me believe it. Yes. 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 (laughs) 
see, this is why you want to get to yes with yourself. Because if someone else tries to get to yes for you, it's pretty awful. You don't want that to happen to you. All right, everyone, thanks so much. If you'd rather listen to the podcast on YouTube, it's there too. Have a wonderful week.